now we will look at uh, you know the first example that I was talking about, which is a complete end-to-end -end 5G connectivity call flow, starting from the procedures of registration, trickling down to authentication, security mode commands, subscriber data management, PDU establishment, N4 setup for your packet forwarding. And how does this translate to analyzing the same data using Wireshark, right? Or any packet analyzer for that format, right? Um, so now if we, I have a trace file here, which is a 5G SA connectivity file, and it's a successful flow end to end, right? Because uh, first, I, I do want to cover a complete golden reference call flow so that it helps uh, you know, the troubleshooting process much more uh, efficiently, right? Um, so here you can see that the trace begins. Again, there's a lot of information that is captured in the trace. Uh, as I already said, one can apply display filters to be able to narrow down only those protocols of interest uh, or only those messages that one can add for uh, for accelerating the troubleshooting journey, right? Uh, and this trace file, as you can see, has a bunch of messages in it, TCP uh, exchanges, acts, so on and so forth, your HTTP2 headers for uh, discoveries, right? Um, but we will start from the portion where the registration of the device happens, right? For this purpose, I'm assuming that your, uh, you know, your RACH procedures are successful. So your RRC setup is already successful. Device, you know, uh, you know, was successfully able to uh, get the RACH preamble, set up the RRC resources, and then send the dedicated NAS message for registration requests, right? So we'll start from, from that portion, okay? So if I uh, scroll down all the way, I should be able to locate uh, the initial registration request, right? And you can see in frame number 520, uh, the registration, initial UE registration request, that'll have the, the relevant parameters for registration. The type of identity is uh, displayed as Suki, right? So it's your uh, subscriber, uh, essentially your, uh, uh, in, in this case, is your subscriber uh, subscription concealed identifier apologies uh, and you know that has been displayed as the format uh, for your 5gs mobile identity uh, in this case and then along with your different ue security capabilities right so that sort of kicks off your registration process but after that once the registration process has been kicked off it finally triggers a few set of HTTP2 messages uh, for authentication purposes, uh, and also your uh, your you know requesting authentication vectors from the unified data management, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, so in this case, you know you can see that uh, it triggers uh, the different procedures related to that. You can see your very first procedure for authentication has been kicked off. Uh, using the post message as i said got a request uh, the uh, you get you get the uri then you you pretty much be able to send that payload attach that payload as part of the authentication uh, so the you know the post message has been requesting the authentication and then one can also analyze the data that is contained within that authentication message, right? So the job of the AMF here is to request the UE authentication vectors and algorithms information from the authentication server function, right? So that is what corresponds to the, uh, the post message here. And as you can see uh, in, in the message, the, the key value is either your SUPI or SUPI that, you know, uh, that was already listed as part of the registration request. Now, trickling down further, there are certain uh, security information-based uh, messages as well, uh, typically that have to go as part of youth user authorization, right? Both authentication authorization. Um, and then, uh, you know, there are also certain get functions for your network repository function for uh, discoveries, right? So essentially uh, first the right network functions have to be discovered in terms of communication to start flowing through right so you have the right ip addresses the amf is very well aware which network function to forward this request to right um, and from there 
uh, it kicks off pretty much your uh, subscription uh, data essentially tied to your authentication function as well. Uh, so this procedure uh, will, will kick off that uh, and then followed by you see a lot of, uh, you know, 200 OKs. Uh, this is, we're still in the authentication step, you know, between the registration to successfully complete uh, there's still a lot of intermittent steps that have to go through. So we're currently analyzing the authentication part. Um, so looks like uh, those post and get messages have been acknowledged successfully with the 200. OK, this is for the get message uh, for the post message for the authentication. Looks like, uh, you know, there's a successful 201 created. Uh, and then finally, as a NAS message, as a dedicated NAS message, uh, the AMF is able to uh, send an authentication uh, request in, in this case, right? Uh, now, this authentication request is actually sent as a downlink message to the device, right? Uh, asking uh, for the right parameters for the device to be able to get authenticated with the network. Uh, and as part of this request, as you can see, uh, you know, the, the network will send the, the, the NAS key set identifiers, it will send the the, the random authentication challenge parameters. And of course, the device will make the right computations and it will send back, uh, you know, your different authentication response result, right? So this is essentially the key or the response that the device sends back, uh, followed by, you know, your uh, authentication will actually make sure that the device responds with the right key. It is able to authenticate, validate the subscriber successfully. Right. Uh, from there, the next step, as you can see, is pretty much through your uh, UDM function, right? So your unified data management essentially has to be discovered in this case uh, so that it can take care of the right authorizations and authentications, uh, followed by, uh, you know, your UDR will pretty much be invoking uh, your UDM in this case for authentication. Uh, looks like that procedure is successfully complete. It's acknowledged, uh, you know, with the 204 no, con no content, get procedures are successful, and that completes your authentication step of the process, right? So the device is now authenticated successfully. The next step is to go through your security mode command procedures, right? For that purpose, again, you know, uh, the, the AMF will send a security mode command for your 5G mobility management procedures. Uh, so, you know, so that the device can be, uh, you know, be able to cipher the right parameters for communication, right? Now the device responds back with a security mode complete, right? Uh, responds back with the, with the type of identifier as Suki. Uh, it will attach, you know, what are the 5G MM capabilities? What are the UE security capabilities that are supported in this case? So a lot of that is boasted. And finally, your user location parameters, all of that is also attached, right? So essentially, which M MCC, MNC uh, is it camped on? Again, these are dummy numbers, but in actual traces, you will be able to look at uh, the real values contained uh, in these, right? So what's the cell identity? Which cell is it camped on? What's the tracking area code, et cetera, right? Just to make sure that the device is camped on the right cell, is authenticated, and is uh, registered successfully, right? Um, so based on that, now comes the final leg of the registration process, which is your subscriber data management, your context setup, and enforcing the right policy rules, right? So you have to have your policy control being set up successfully as well, right? So for that, there's a sequence of steps that have to happen. Uh, as I already talked about, uh, the first step is your, your subscription data management. Uh, procedures that, you know, based on, uh, you know, what data is being provisioned for uh, the device, uh, essentially that, you know, that will be uh, completed successfully, uh, provide, followed by, you know, you also have a set of uh, processes here. As you can see, you know, you have your uh, UDM, UE context information, uh, essentially, that is also uh, an important step for the device to be able to successfully register to the network. And once all of those procedures are completed, right? So you have your relevant hand handshakes between 
uh, the UDM, uh, your context is verified. Uh, you also enforce the right uh, policy rules in this case, right? So if we keep scrolling down, we should be able to see, uh, you know, the policy rules being, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, being invoked as well. And then finally, that marks a successful registration access, right? So at this point, uh, the device is successfully registered to the network, right? And this, again, kicks off a series of steps in terms of the context setup uh, and your PDU session establishment, right? Uh, so going further, drilling down, right? The context setup request is, uh, is, is sent back, uh, uh, in this case, you see a bunch of parameters that are associated uh, with your tracking area identity or you know, your network feature supports. So essentially giving a lot of indication in terms of what features are supported. Uh, in this case, IMS VoiceOver PS is, is supported, uh, which is of course very critical for Vonner calls to uh, go through. Right. And then, of course, you have your, you know, your different parameters as well, such as emergency services supported or not. Right. So once that response is, is come through, right, which means you're, you're finally assigned your uh, AMF UE NGAP ID, you'll have your RAN UE NGAP ID successfully configured. Now is a good time for the device to be able to establish a PDU for the default uh, data network right, default PDUs for data network and your IMS network, both of them, right, which correspond to 5QI5 for IMS and 5QI9 for your default bearer, right, for internet bearer, right. So you can see the device actually kicks off a PDU establishment request, which we are in this step now, the PDU session establishment, right. And once that is kicked off, you can see uh, a list of procedures, right. So essentially, uh, your uh, PDU session related contexts have to be defined, right, uh, which will essentially be able to uh, show, you know, what PDU session am I trying to establish uh, and which functions are they supposed to be able to uh, interact with, right? In this case, uh, you, of course, have your UDM, PCF, you may also have your BSF for binding purposes. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that call in detail, right? So you look at the three steps, your, your PDU establishment request again is, is being forwarded in this case, um, and it should probably also reveal the 5QI uh, value here. Uh, if I keep going, PDU session ID, uh, let's go ahead and look at the subsequent messages, right? Okay, so once that is completed, you do have your policy control, right? Uh, so in this case, uh, your PCF is, is a very important step uh, so that, uh, you know, you can complete, uh, you know, your, uh, you can select your policy and charging function service entity. Uh, so the AMF contacts the PCF to create a policy association and retrieve the UE policy uh, and uh, or access and mobility control policy, right? So the PCF will respond with the policy association information and it registers for events like location report, registration state, or the communication failure, uh, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so we'll see a list of those procedures being activated here as well, right? In terms of uh, your policy control. And again, I will, uh, and I know there's a lot to cover, so I might be moving quickly with this because I do want to cover a, a failure scenario, uh, but you know, intermittently you do see a lot of procedures being successfully acknowledged. Uh, your, your post messages are being, um, uh, you know, created successfully as well. Uh, and as you, you know, sort of keep trickling down, I already talked about this, you see the bindings as well, uh, your BSF function, um, uh, right for in and it were it couldn't be co-located as well with many network functions um, but once you once you keep scrolling down now you actually come to the last step which is your n4 setup right uh, for uh, your user plane uh, essentially right so since the list of pdu sessions to be activated was included in the registration request depending on what the device wants to do uh, you know 
there will be a list of uh, uh, procedures or so, sort of allocation of TEIDs uh, the GNODE-B should use when sending uplink GTP PDUs to the UPF, right? So this N4 procedure, the PFCP procedure, is used to identify or select the right UPF, right? So you can facilitate uh, the, the right flow of uh, user plane packets, right? Uh, so you can see a PFCP establishment procedure. Uh, if I click on this, it'll have, uh, you know, all the IEs that require to be configured. Uh, and then, you know, pretty much your response uh, will come back. Uh, essentially, uh, in this case, you will see all the different created PDRs in this case, right? So as I said, you will have an assigned TEID an allocated TAID that will govern the packet forwarding control protocol. Um, and the session modification is again signaled to the data plane, right? So once that is successfully completed, uh, that should essentially finally complete the PDU session establishment, right? Uh, and this is for both uh, QFI flows, which is, you know, in this case, uh, uh, yeah, we should be able to look at, you know, which uh, uh, QS it belongs to. Like in this case, you know, you can see this one is for the IMS PDU. So your PDU session is successful for IMS. And after this, the device can start its registration request with the IMS network, something that we covered in the previous webinar, right? Um, and then there should also be a PDU session establishment for the default PDU, 5QI9, right? So this is for the internet uh, a data network, right? So essentially that completes an end-to-end -end flow for a connectivity. This is a reference golden call flow. I kind of went in depth with this because, uh, you know, this will uh, make it much more easier to analyze a failed scenario, 